Uh, um, so how much is that? So. Yeah. All right, welcome to the Podcast Editor's Mastermind, the podcast dedicated to the business side of podcast editing for podcast editors by podcast editors. This week, we are continuing the goal planning and review and going through all the good and the bad. But before we can get, get into all that, a little introduction. My name is Daniel Abendroth. You can find me at rothmedia.audio. I'm Jennifer Longworth. You can find me at bourbonbarrelpodcasting.com or at KY Podcasting across social media. And I'm Brian Ensminger. You can find me at toptieraudio.com and links to all of the other places are there. And this week's episode is brought to you by Reaper for Podcasting. I am working on a course to get you up and running with Reaper. One of the biggest issues with Reaper is how difficult it is to get started. So I'm creating a very simple up and up and running, whatever you want to call it, way to get started working with Reaper so you can upgrade your podcast editing. If you are interested in signing up for updates on the course, it's still in production. You can go to reaperforpodcasting.com and sign up for the updates. Ooh, that's an easy to remember location. Reaperforpodcasting.com. Right? Good job. I have like five. Uh, I know Reaper for Podcasting, <laughs> Podcasting with Reaper. There's a couple. You said like two, Reaper now I'm lost. <laughs> yeah, so reaperforpodcasting.com. That's you a good one. For the newsletter. <laughs> All right. So we are continuing our review and planning. So if you caught us last episode, we went through, we reviewed 2020, so everything that happened and the good and the bad and and the more bad. So you don't need to listen or watch that for this one. Because <laughs> <Before ever. wow. laughs> I wasn't on it, so I can't say I thought you guys did a great job. Oh, why? Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> uh, but this episode, we're going to focus on 2021. So we're looking to the future. So you don't need to listen to the last episode in order to get caught up. We can start here. And of course, go back and listen to it if you haven't, because it's good stuff. So there is a planning sheet or a worksheet. It's the podcast editor's master plan. That's mm -hmm. what it is. Sorry. Yeah. It's beautiful. <laughs> it's gorgeous. Huh. Well put together. It is. Well, shout out for Carrie, who cannot be with us tonight. You can find her at yayapodcasting.com. And she was also the one that made this possible and actually created the PDF document. So how do we get that PDF document? Just go to podcasteditorsmastermind.com, scroll to the bottom of the page, and you will see, what did we call it? The Yeti letter? <laughs> yeah, so join the Yeti letter, and we will email you a copy of the uh, planning guide. It's just that simple. Yeah, just five simple steps, right? <laughs> <laughs> and, and then some waiting, and then you get it. <laughs> All right, so Perfect. shall we uh, get started looking at our future? Please. Did Ooh, you bring your crystal ball? Spooky. I don't have mine. <laughs> nah, I left oh. it in the other room. Shoot. Well. All right. So if you have a copy of the document, it'll look like this. If you're listening, you know, pull yours up. If you're watching, well, here you go. Uh, so dreaming of the future. If the stars all aligned, what do you want to happen in 2021? Who wants to start this one off? I'll, I'll start this one and I'll maybe just kind of preface this by, I'm not going to share specific numbers mm -hmm. uh, and we may not share specifics this week because talking about next year can, might, you know, give some stuff away. But one of the things I want to do is see if I can find a way to essentially triple my per hour rate. And nice. so I'm looking Whoa. for ways to do that either by increasing efficiency or by, bringing additional people in to help with some of the workload or by simply, as I add new clients, continuing to upscale those clients into a different pricing bracket with a different editing structure that offers different value to them. Wow. That's significant. It is. I'm not sure how I'm going to do it yet. I'm still working that part out, but that's, <laughs> it says if the stars aligned and everything yeah. happened, so I had yeah. to put it down. That's a fair point. Yeah. <laughs> 
So for me, um, we'll think about my podcast studio that I have and the office condo is currently for sale and there's a couple things I could do with it. There's a potential buyer who may let me keep my studio there or I could move it to another location or I could close it all together. Hmm. Don't really want to do that. But if I keep the studio open, then get more traffic going through and at more than just one person recording there. So yeah. I don't have like a plan on how to do that yet. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't get that far in thinking, but if I'm going to keep a studio, I need to get more than one person recording in it. So Yeah, but that would really be a huge weight off your shoulders to not have that office mortgage, right? To just mm -hmm. have space to rent or something like that instead. Right. So I won't be owning it anymore. I'll be renting it from somewhere. Yeah. Either where I am now and I don't have to move anything or I've I've already scoped out another place in case I don't get to keep my totally awesome bourbon barrel wall studio, which we put a lot of hard shame. work into. I know it's great. It looks <laughs> so, so good. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, right now it looks like we'll be keeping that, but who, who knows? It could change like in the blink of an eye. I haven't seen an official written offer about this yet. <laughs> so we'll see. But, um, you know, especially after having Chris Curran on and hearing how he developed clients by inviting them into his studio to record a show with him and then, oh, look, I want to do it on my own. I'm like, oh, wait, the studio can actually be the gateway into more income. Mm -hmm. Why have I not leveraged this? I yeah. was actually thinking about that as well, because I've been trying to target small businesses like owner operated businesses mm -hmm. and cold outreach is not working very well for me, which is not a huge surprise because it's difficult. Yeah. But if I were to do something like what you just talked about, have something that's local focused where I either could go on site or could bring them in and let them highlight their business and then maybe leverage that into some relationships could be really valuable. That's a yeah. thanks for sharing that. Yeah, absolutely. Give Chris Curran the credit, though, of course. <laughs> of course. <laughs> I, I give it to you because you mentioned it. Oh, well, thank you. There you thank go. You. Credit all around. How about you, Daniel? So we have uh, Michelle and I. So if you caught last week's episode, my wife was on the show. We are business partners in this. So we have a number of projects that has been on our minds. So ideally, we'd like to diversify our income stream away from just like straight editing and direct client work to more passive type thing. So one of those is going to be the Reaper course. And then she's got some things going on. We want to get more into kind of like podcast coaching and just kind of branching out beyond our kind of typical, I guess what you typically find from what you think of for podcast editing. Cool. Multiple yeah. st revenue streams. That's what it's all about. Scaling and multiple revenue streams, right? Yeah. That's how you and, I, and that really stems from 2020 and that we were very fortunate not to be impacted all that much. I think we lost two clients due to actually like them trying to cut back and cut costs, but we still gained, you know, a few more. So like we kind of, one of our wins that we rode the wave and we've maintained throughout 2020, but it also kind of brings up the point, something happens again, we don't want to be solely reliant on like high price, high ticket items or, you know, mm. service. Mm -hmm. So we're looking into kind of branching into more self-driven offerings. So people like pay for a course or pay for something else that they use themselves and like we're not involved in it right it's like lower price but then kind of self-guided that could lead into higher price items but just something to kind of diversify the level of which we're targeting like like value level so we have like more offerings for wherever you're at or near wherever potential clients would be yeah that that's a place where i feel like i have a bit of a gap right so i do consulting mm -hmm. i offer some of that not a lot and i also have the hindenburg course which is mm -hmm. essentially self-directed, but I don't have anything that I would consider sort of in the middle where you get a certain level of connect with me, like some kind of like a group coaching or a group training thing. That's mm, something yeah. that I don't can currently offer. And I think that's a gap in what I have. Now I'm yeah. going to have to take more notes because I forgot that one when I <laughs> was writing down my stuff. So I'm going to mute my mic and you guys keep talking. 
<laughs> well, I was I was doing you know a little bit of a group coaching thing, and then COVID shut me down from live mm-hmm. events, and then I kind of forgot about it. So that's something else I can revive. Well, whenever we're able to do live events again, I mean, I need to pivot. Yay. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, do it on Zoom or something, but that's no fun. So we'll just we'll just wait. The 2020 word of the year, pivot. <laughs> I'm like, I'm going to say it. I'm going to say it. <laughs> yeah. And that's kind of our plan. Like we have, and this is going to be one of those things that we aren't, I'm not going to talk about live, but just like a number of ideas to capture different audiences. Yeah. All right. All right. Who would you love to with or for? Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. Okay. Next question. What? <laughs> so I interpreted. It, I think this was the typo. We had a bit of a joke of who would you love to eat with or for? <laughs> um, <laughs> but I'm pretty sure we meant who would work. you love to work with or for? Is that how you guys? Yeah, yeah that's that's how I it? took it as as well. Mm-hmm. So besides the obvious, you know, I love to work with Chris and Tom and Steve and all these other guys and gals and people in the industry. My kind of reaching for the stars would be Kakos, Kakos, something. I can't, I don't know how to pronounce the name, but it's the company that develops Reaper. Mm. And yeah, this idea came around from Brian, who has his Hindenburg users group, HindiUsers.com. And how they've reached out to you about, like, essentially, like, picking your brain about Hindenburg. Is that right? Some of that, yeah. And then also just creating some connect points for them mm-hmm. to interact more personally in the group. Yeah. And the fact that they sponsor a podcast editors conference and they are aware of their place in podcasting. I don't feel like the people behind Reaper are aware mm. of their potential. So I'd love Hmm. to kind of bring one. So one of the goals of my course and what I'm doing is to bring essentially market share to Reaper and podcast editing. Um, But I'd love to work with them to kind of either steer some development of Reaper towards podcasting or just like get them more involved in podcasting to improve the editing space, I guess. So that's my big goal. Yeah. Cool. I like it. How about you, Jennifer? Yeah, Jennifer, what do you got? Oh, who would I love to work with or for? I Just continuing on being hyper-local mm-hmm. and just focusing on Kentucky. Someone asked me if I was taking on new clients recently, and I knew they were talking about out-of-state, and I said no, because I just, I'm only going to be taking on people who are in Kentucky, because that's, that's what I do. So I'm not even going to look outside of that now. This recent one could have fallen in my lap, but I'm like, (laughs) (laughs) I was going to say, unless it falls in my lap. Well, this one probably would have fallen in my lap. But if you're going to niche down or you're going to be focused, you can't get all sidetracked because I only have a limited amount of editing time in my day. So I'm saving it for the the locals. So more locals. All right. For me, kind of split. I really enjoy working with DIY podcasters, the ones that are doing their own editing to help them upskill, basically. I I really enjoy the interactions that I get in the Hindenburg group to bring people up, to answer their questions, to recommend tools. So I think I want to continue that. That doesn't currently bring in a whole lot of money. There's a little bit of consulting and a lot of free work with that. So that's not really (laughs) the, the, the bacon bringer. And the other one, I've really been struggling with how to express it because I call it things like, you know, uh, small business and nonprofit leaders or something like that. And recently, the way I heard it expressed that I think kind of connects with what I'm trying to do, because small business and nonprofit can mean a lot of different things. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so I think what I'm looking for, if we were to use business terms, are those owner-operated businesses. They don't necessarily have to be small, but they're the ones where the owner is involved. It's probably a brick and mortar local type business or you know a business that does actual goods and services that maybe has a marketing department but the owner is still involved enough that I could get call it FaceTime with that person mm-hmm. to help them 
elevate their brand using podcasting. Yeah. I love that. I've toyed with the idea of like looking into more local because I'd love to kind of like be a thing in Memphis of podcasting. Yeah. That reminds me of one show I work on. So it's essentially a company newsletter in podcast form, but it is publicly available. Mm -hmm. And they interview different so like people in the company and highlighting either their success or just like some cool things that the company is doing. So I think there's huge potential to like talk to these owner operators for them to just kind of talk about what their company is doing mm -hmm. as like exciting and like a marketing thing. Yeah. Well, and yep. it could also, depending on what they do, that could actually help them build relationships with vendors or potential clients to bring them on and say, hey, we'd like to highlight for all of our employees, but this will be publicly available as well. So we'd like for you to come in and help us build a relationship that will mm -hmm. benefit you. Would you mind sharing it with your people as well? That could actually be really slick. I, now the wheels are turning. I, we just gave <laughs> up our best idea, didn't we? <laughs> well, I mean, if you're if you're doing local, then... There's much less competition. Yeah. You know, that close. Because I have, I work on a show where the goal of the show is one thing and is geared towards, you know, a different set of audience. But the goal for the host is something completely different. Mm -hmm. So right. he brings on guests that his audience finds valuable that gets him in front of the people he wants to talk to to sell his thing. Yeah. Exciting stuff. Yeah. Your dream project. Brian, do you have a dream project? You know, I don't know that I have a specific dream project. So I would have to say no. Okay. Good yes or no answer, right? Yeah. <laughs> Easy. Non applicable. I kind of did mine last year and built a mm. bourbon barrel wall studio. So I'm like, okay, where do I go from there? as far as a dream project goes and i don't think very big in general so thinking big is hard you hear people say go big or go home and i'm like i'll, I'll see you yeah have a nice day, huh? <laughs> i'll be in bed <laughs> <I'll> be <later. laughs> it's like hey I, I don't know i don't know how to think big so what's my dream project i i did it so i did it i proved i could do it now like going back to what we had on there before you know maybe doing something more with it than what's currently happening. Yeah. I think, I don't know how much I want to talk about my potential dream project. I know I've talked about it privately with you guys. You um, can tell everybody you want to, you want to work with Jennifer. I get it. It's okay. <laughs> I'm going to move to uh, Lexa. <laughs> yeah. <Wait>. Lexington. <laughs> yeah. I'm like Lexington. No, that's not it. Oh. That's, that's I didn't know Lexington, that's a real place. Kentucky. That's a whole country right there. <laughs> yeah, Luxembourg. <laughs> but there was a SaaS product that I was started working on. Yeah. And I know three other people that have a real strong interest in you getting this up and running. So we can share it with everybody else and tell them all the things they've been missing all these years. Yeah. So yeah, that's probably my dream project. It's a very, very much of a dream <laughs> at this point, but who knows? All righty. What is the dream rate for your services? So I what? guess we don't really have to talk about oh. specific numbers. Yeah, stay tuned for a few weeks when we talk about specific numbers with Steve and Mark. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, so this is a good promo for yeah, next week. So if you are in the podcast editors club, it's hard keeping all these things separate. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So in the podcast editors club, and if you're not there, then you really need to be because that is the best place for podcast editors. They did a survey where they they asked questions from. So they surveyed the group and got people's rates and a whole bunch of information. Next Thursday, so a week from today, at they're starting at 9 p.m. Eastern, 8 p.m. Central. So they're going to go over the numbers, the results of the survey, and then afterwards they're going to come on our show and we're going to talk it out with them and kind of go over like our takeaway and just have a nice little powwow about numbers and podcast editing. So that is one that you're definitely going to want to tune in for. Yes. So if you are constantly asking yourself, what should I be charging? 
Yeah. We won't be able to give you the answer, but they'll be able to provide some parameters of what other people are doing, as well as the things that they're doing to up level what they're charging. And what the date for that will be November 19th, 2020. So if you're listening in the future, it's not next week anymore. You'll have to go back to the archives and get that. <laughs> yeah. All right. So the next thing, if you had an infinite amount to spend, what would you buy for your business? I know this one. Let's hear it. Okay. So I have a Rodecaster Pro, but I would buy probably a four channel cloud lifter to go with it because the mics I have aren't very loud. Even if you crank it all the way up, it's still not loud enough. So I want a four channel cloud lifter to go between my mics and the Rodecaster Pro. And then let's upgrade the microphones while we're at it. We got an infinite amount of money. We have an infinite amount. So let's get some high end mics, get the cloud lifter Roadcaster Pro, that's what I would do. How about you, Daniel? What would you buy with infinite money? A house. <laughs> okay. <laughs> or a, a private space. So if you caught last week's episode, Michelle and I share a pretty small office. And she's a crafty person. So she has like craft supplies everywhere. I have a big honking standing desk. I can't do a whole lot for like I have sound panels behind me. And that's about all I can do because just like it's not a good space for us. So we want like a house with enough room so I could have my own space, like have a recording space. She'd have her own office and we'd be able to work at home comfortably. Yeah. Nice. Awesome. Yes. So I, I probably have issues because when I saw buy, I I also in my mind saw spend on. So in, ter in terms of buying, I would probably want to have a fully decked out studio that could do video and audio yes. in-person mm. stuff with editing bays and nice lighting and super fast internet Fancy. and couches, like all of that stuff. I would want a wall of nothing but high powered computers to have other people <laughs> do editing as well or to daisy chain them all j together just to prove that I can make it run faster because I have that. But then in the... In the category of not so much have, but spend money on, I would probably want to bring on a marketing strategist and executioner. No. So, wow. <laughs> <laughs> Some, somebody can help. With I the, mean, we know what you mean, yeah, but. <laughs> the marketing strategy and the execution of the marketing strategy to, to help grow the business. Because yeah. I'm getting to where I'm pretty efficient at producing high quality results, but I still flounder when it comes to creating marketing messages or understanding how to present what I do in language that my ideal customer wants to hear instead of what I want to say about myself. So I yeah. think that would help me mm -hmm. a lot because those are gaps in me. Yeah. My mind went to ads, but like yes. that's way better. <laughs> well, ad, but ads are part of that, right? Advertising yeah, yeah, yeah. and marketing do go hand in hand. Mm. But if you don't know what to say, buying ass to say isn't going to help a whole lot. <laughs> I spent $100 on the wrong thing again. <laughs> <laughs> Any other dreams? I mean, you know, vacations and taking naps. Are <laughs> yeah. You there. know. My SaaS product I put down. <laughs> That's a nice dream. Um, so I think one thing that I put down that I've I've never done before is being able to take a two-week uninterrupted vacation. Mm. Which speaks to, you know, I've, I have I mentioned to you guys off the air that I've talked, I'm starting to talk to someone about potentially taking on a portion of the client load. Don't mm -hmm. know if that's going to work, but a two week vacation doing week to week client work doesn't work unless right. either those clients are willing to deal with two week interruptions and work ahead, or you have somebody available to help step in and fill that gap. Hmm. Yeah, it's tough. I remember we took a one week vacation, but it was, and this was just a single week. Half my clients were able to record ahead. And then for everybody else, essentially I spend a couple hours in the morning editing and doing mm -hmm. my work. And then we spend the rest of the day on vacation, but still mm. it was cool yeah. to be able to do that, to have like a working vacation as opposed to just yeah. like staying at home. But still like, it'd be nice to have two weeks of not thinking about it. Yeah. 
Maybe we can talk to Brittany because I know she's able to do that. Yeah. I, th- I think if I remember right from that episode, I don't remember the number, but one of the things she talked about is not only that she has one person that she works with, but also she brought these clients on and they knew that this is how she lives. Yeah. Mm. And I think it's probably easier to bring on a new client than it is to shift an old client yeah. to that. Yeah. That's hundred percent true. What tools are you starting the year with? Broadcaster Pro and Adobe Audition. Mm-hmm. Okay, that's efficient. Yeah. Daniel, you're starting next year with something you didn't have this year that looks gorgeous right behind you. Oh, my sound panels? Yeah, those are... Yeah. I didn't even think about putting that down. No, those those look great. They do great stuff for the sound, but those mm-hmm. are going to be killer when it comes time to do the videos for your Reaper course. Yeah, and I'm so kind of side topic. I'm doing more like video content, and I just <laughs> released a video. Some I see all the time when people like sign up for a new Apple account and try to submit their feed. They get into that loop, yes. logging into Apple Podcasts, or they're yes. hit that wall with no information from Apple and how to fix it. It's actually recorded a video with this background, and I was thrilled by how it looked. Yeah, so excited. <laughs> it looked good. Yeah. Not to brag or anything, but I did good. It does look very good. <laughs> I guess I'll go then. I wrote a number of things. So I use Reaper, Airtable for tracking my clients, Wave for um, accounting and yeah. billing, Dropbox, Mailbird for my email, Adobe Suite because I use Premiere and Photoshop, RX6 because I haven't justified spending the money to upgrade. Mind Maple, which is a mind map. Um, I use it to plan out my course. Slack for internal communication. Google Drive, because I just can't seem to get away from it, no matter how hard I try. iDrive, which is another online storage system I tried out. Uh, Phonic, occasionally. OBS for streaming. Bandicam for screen recording. Descript. Canva, Headliner. And then Hive is something I use with my business coach. Wow, wow. you put a lot more thought into that than I did. <laughs> oh, my. Well, so my the reason I did that. <laughs> Somebody's got to create links for this, you know. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I mean, I mean, I only use Reaper. I only use Reaper. No. So I want to. One thing my business coach, like her goals for the year is to get rid of subscriptions. So she's a big Mm. fan of AppSumo and getting these lifetime deals. And so I really want to sit down and think about every single thing I use to see what subscriptions I'm paying for and see how I could get away from that. And luckily, everything on this list except for Dropbox. Adobe. Adobe. Descript. Is for like not recurring charge headliner if I use too much because you get like 10 free. But I think other than that, and like wave, I mean, the transaction fees. Right. But other than that, it's all been non subscription. So nice. Cool. Because you had a lot there. Yeah. <laughs> you did. As well as so tools, I guess my microphone, my desk, I don't know. But like, breeze, well, yeah, so those are my tools. So oh. my, mine will probably be a little bit more boring, or at least not as many <laughs> things. I'll be starting a, the year with a relatively new MacBook Pro. I upgraded nice. this year a few months ago, and it is so nice. Although now I'm totally drooling over <laughs> the new MacBook Air that appears to have as much processing power as the one that I bought for a lot more than that. So kind of bummed about that, but we'll see. Hindenburg, I've got RX and Ozone and a ton of other plugins that I use. I've been using ScreenFlow for videos, both for editing as well as for shooting, Squadcast and StreamYard, Wave Accounting, like what you use. And then I just picked up, you mentioned getting away from subscriptions. I picked up, was it Groove Funnels? It's similar mm-hmm. to, what's the one that Russell Brunson sells? The, I know, Click, Click Funnels. Funnels comes to mind. It's, it's similar to Click Funnels or those other kinds of things. So it's, it's a business automation tool Mm -hmm. for that kind of thing. And I picked it up because it gets rid of that subscription. It wasn't a subscription that I was paying, but it was something that I felt was in the future. And so Mm -hmm. I'll be seeing about Mm -hmm. how I can leverage that. So 
Cool. They've got a dev, dev roadmap that's supposed to include things like email newsletters and booking service and live streaming events, like all that kind of stuff, like StreamYard competitor, all rolled into this one thing. So I'm looking forward to seeing whether or not they can deliver on their promise. Nice. Excellent. I think that I also like Meet Fox and a couple other things I used. Yeah. Yeah. So is there anything that you don't have that you need or any tools you don't need anymore? And so this is kind of like why I went so hard on that other one is seeing like, what can I get rid of? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So for me, new computer for Michelle She's using an old refurbished laptop, which is pretty powerful, but it's refurbished. It's slower. It's not ideal. So we're looking into a new computer for her. But in the meantime, getting a stand for the desk. So that way she can have a second monitor and then like a laptop holder. So she'll have like the two screens that she can work on. And then I want to do some upgrades to my computer. So I just got a graphics card, which has been amazing. More RAM, possibly a new processor, if I can justify that, Mm -hmm. and a new camera. So I'm doing more video content. So I want to be able to kind of take to the next level. I'm currently using the Logitech C920, which is fantastic. But I'd like to get something, just kind of upgrade that a little bit more. Yeah, I, I saw there's a new one out. I can't remember what I think it was on Alpha Gaming that I saw that it looks really sweet. It shoots 4K 60 and nice. it looks like it has a really good picture, but it's it's expensive. It's like 250. I was trying to find like a good webcam. It, it is guess, a webcam. It's yeah. it's not it's not like a DSLR. It, it's hard to find hmm. like if you find a 4K, that's the first I've heard of it. Like all the 4K webcams I saw, like you're down to like 15 frames per second yeah it's just like <laughs> i mean Why that's cool enough. And, uh, and i want a 4k because i want to be able to like be able to crop it down and still get you know 1080p yeah whereas like right now if i shoot on 1080 i have to like zoom in to crop out out beyond my sound panel wall so i don't get as high resolution i don't get the full 1080 right so anyway, jennifer you know, as the things that I don't need anymore, mm. I'm not a sucker for every single plug-in out there. I am. <laughs> uh huh. I just got a yeah a new thing. Earlier I today. unsubscribed from AppSumo deals, so nice. those don't trick me anymore. <laughs> um, <laughs> so, so I I think the the one thing about tools that I have that I don't need anymore is the full. Creative Cloud. Mm. I need Adobe Audition because that's what I edit in. But do yeah. I need Photoshop, Illustrator, and all the other things? <laughs> Not really, but I really like to have them. But I do a lot in Canva. So I add that to my toolbox. Mm. As far as design and stuff goes, even at my my new job, I've they're like, well, here's how we do it. I'm like, yeah, I'm putting this all in Canva because it's so much easier and I know how to get around Canva. Canva's amazing. <laughs> <laughs> so do I need these other things? I think when I was merch mom for the Lafayette Band store, the designer would send me stuff and I would tweak it in Illustrator. So then I needed it, but I just haven't needed it now. So I think I can, since it is a subscription, I'm not willing to give up Audition because that's the doll I know how to, do things and maybe just downgrade my subscription to I, one app. Yeah. I've struggled with justifying Adobe because like, I don't need, I like using premiere, but I don't need to, mm-hmm. but Michelle uses Photoshop a lot. And that's what, and she's tried like free alternatives like GIMP, um, no. but it's no, just not it's, nearly it's to that level. So like, if we're going to spend like, $30 a month for Photoshop. We might as well spend $40 a month so I can get Premiere. And I use Illustrator occasionally because like that's what my brand graphics were created in. So I can like tweak it if I need to or repurpose it. Right. But yeah, I'd love to get away from it because it's still it's a hefty chunk of change every month. Yeah. I mean, I could start using Hindenburg. I know a really good course it. you could. Yeah. yeah get get you up it. and running. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I don't want to learn anything new. Which so is I'll totally keep, fair. 
<laughs> yeah. Okay, I'll keep paying. <laughs> but do I need to pay for Photoshop? No, probably not. Although it's really cool to say I have Photoshop. Right. I could Photoshop that. <laughs> I could Photoshop. Uh, but I'm terrible at it. I'm terrible <laughs> at it. I, I, I cannot. I'm not a design person at all, which is why I use Canva. So I don't need Photoshop. Yeah. Uh, Brian, what do you got? So in the category of things that I need, there's really not a lot. I need a different chair because this year I've been spending like 12 hours a day in the same chair. So that should be arriving tomorrow because nice. I took action nice. early. And then I, I talked to you guys. Are you going to do an unboxing for us? A, an unboxing, no. <laughs> I'm sorry. Unboxing video. I, I don't do that, especially not with things that will probably make me sweat on camera. So there's that. <laughs> oh, yeah. If you had to put it together yeah. yourself, that's And then luck. also I'm going to get a sit-stand desk. I've ordered the base. I just need to find a top for it because... I need to to be more active in the category of things that I'm paying for that I'm not sure I'm getting the value out of. I put down Zoom, which we use for our weekly oh. meetings. And that's like the reason that that and uh, occasional client I calls. I pay for Zoom too. I need to stop that. So I don't know <laughs> if Google Meet would meet my needs, but I've thought about <laughs> switching to something like that. I'm paying for Squadcast, even though I don't have an active interview show, because if I let it go, I lose the grandfathered pricing. Yeah. And the grandfathered pricing is pretty sweet. <laughs> Unlimited recording for $20 a month instead of $50 a month for like five hours or whatever it is. So mm -hmm. it's, it's a it's a good deal. I okay. Pay yeah. Can I go on a rant for a little bit? Please do. Why sure. can't these companies, and I'm, I'm looking at you, Squadcast, Riverside, sell hours like in a package deal? Because I have clients that don't have interview shows, but occasionally they'll do an interview. And there's no point in like signing up for a monthly deal when they just need like a single hour. It's so, like sell a five hour package that they can use for whenever. You, you mean the Alphonic model where yes. you, you buy a yeah. bundle if you don't want to pay monthly and you just use it when you use it? Yes. It's a little I bit wish... more expensive, but you don't have to have a monthly subscription. See, see I wish there was somebody out there like Alphonic that had proven that it could work. So we could suggest it to a company. Who knows? <laughs> that, see, that's why I kept my Squadcast is so that when, because I'm grandfathered in, yeah. I have the original pricing and when my people need it, I have it for them. So I don't use it personally, but I have clients who use it because I was it's there. Really tempted to like grab it before they went away with it. But I had no plans at the time and like I couldn't justify it. You know, the couple hundred dollars I spend keeping it right. alive so I didn't see how, any savings long term. Yeah. So I, th I think I'll stop with my subscriptions there. There are more. But I think that rant probably worth its weight in gold for this entire video. Yep. If you if you have the ear of these SaaS companies, let them know that there's a value in letting people buy a bundle of stuff. Yeah. I'm looking at you, Descript. Yes. Mr. Mr. <laughs> Mr. Change your plans every couple of weeks force the updates when the computer's trying to do something. And then by the way, I, it's nearly impossible to add hours. Like I'm thankful yeah. that somehow I'm getting what I need out of the software, but the pricing model. Yeah. I understand why people get it. Like, yeah, I'll just, I'm going to stop right there. <laughs> <laughs> people are tired of the subscription model. Well, thank you for coming to my TED yeah. talk. I mean, <laughs> for me, for Descript, I would pay for it every month. Because I use it every month. I don't need right. to buy a bundle of five. But mm -hmm. if I was doing a narrative style show where I produce one episode every six months, and that's like the six months because it's all going out and getting tape and that kind of thing, I wouldn't be willing to pay, I'm sorry, $15 a month for something that I'm going to use you know, two times in the year. And then the one time I need to use it, I'm going to get cut off because it's more than 20 hours that I'm going to try to run at that one shot. Mm-hmm. Okay. I have no opinions in this. <laughs> like, anyway. I'd, I'd probably buy hours from Squadcast. And then whenever my yeah. clients like do their one interview and be like, all right, here, let me, I'll be on the call with you. We can knock this out and stop relying on Zoom. Dude, if, if they would sell the software like Alphonic did, I would pay $300 for the desktop version and install it. Yeah. Right. Mm. And let it run on my processor at a slower speed. I would do that. Mm -hmm. All right, Squadcast, you listening? <laughs> Looking at you, Zach. <laughs> Love what you guys are doing, but yeah. Daniel's right. Pe some people need a bundle. 
or yeah. the ability to do something with it. Yeah. Yeah. All righty. So. All righty. <laughs> Look, it's Next. a dead horse. <laughs> <laughs> All right. What partnerships, uh, Brian, did you have anything else? Nah, okay. I'm good. <laughs> what partnerships do you currently have or want to invest in? I th- I'll start with that one, if that's okay. Sure. Because we've already kind of hit on one of them. Mm-hmm. I want to continue developing relationships within the podcast editing community and the Hindenburg community specifically, because I do want to be able to bring in other editors, either in a a mentoring type capacity or an internship type capacity or as subcontractors to help them upskill. But then also for those that are trying to launch a business and maybe for like me, they struggle to go out and get a client or to have the time to do that. If I've got something where it's starting to exceed my workload, I want to be able to help them start that transition. So that's probably the the biggest one that I'm looking at. How can I invest in that next year? Okay. We should talk about that on our next private one. Okay. It's really interesting. Yeah, because it has to I have to be able to pay for it too, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> An idea popped into my head. <laughs> but I don't I wanna... like it. Write, Write it down, down before, before we get it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Was... <laughs> Jennifer can go while you're writing. Yeah. Okay. What partnerships do you currently have? At what? Well, I am a member of the Chamber of Commerce here in Lexington and I need to figure out how to well, you know, thanks twenty twenty. You know, what back in the old days in 2019. In the before time. <laughs> in the, bo- the BC, 2019 BC, before, before COVID. COVID. <laughs> 2019 BC, you could go to things and meet with people and mingle and, and things like that. And just, I haven't figured out how to leverage all the networking groups, like with Lim- Women Leading Kentucky, Bluegrass Networking Pros. Chamber of Commerce, things like that haven't, you know, everybody's struggling trying to figure out what the heck do we do with all this. And I don't know. I don't think anyone knows yet. But when we're able to do things like that again or, you know, be more ingenuous with how to plug into these people, because I I believe in networking, especially since I want to, you know, serve the local community that's key. So I don't know if that, yeah. like, thanks, COVID. <laughs> <laughs> you ruined all my plans. <laughs> How about you, Daniel? I didn't really have anything because I don't, and maybe I need to spend more time. Like, I don't know of any like partnerships that I currently have, but I definitely want to like develop partnerships in my niche and become more like well-known not through podcast editing but being like a podcast editor in my niche Mm -hmm. so i'll probably look into that a little bit for next year other than that i can't really think of anything okay brian did you want to hit us with your uh so one of the one of the things that i thought was really kind of important is that this the thing that we're going through also has what events might you want to attend or what are some low value things that you might be able to pass off? So I'll mm-hmm. just ask the two of you, which of those do you think would be most interesting to talk about? Events to attend. So well, like that we want to attend. Yeah. So like, I will talk about that. I definitely want to go back to PodFest, assuming it happens. Yeah. That was a great one. I've got some interest in going to podcast movement, but the thing I'd, I'd like to do that I don't know exactly how to get to is what you were talking about. How can I find events where I could find my target clients, but that are also Mm. appropriate for me to attend, right? So if Mm. I were to go to a mixer of $10 million business owners, I would not be an appropriate attendee for that group of people. Now, I get that. thinking about podcast movement, it's in Nashville this year. So why would you not go? Being I'd that like you to live in Nashville. That's driving distance for me. Yeah, I mean, yeah, me the, too. <laughs> the only reason I wouldn't go is if I couldn't get the vacation time to mm, okay. to do that, or like if it came down between that and Christmas, my wife would kill me if I chose that over Christmas. I'd just be yeah. right. I'll be honest. Like we we have to work we have to work this out. It's okay. Yeah, yeah. Well, my top events 
our PodFest and hopefully podcast editor conference, right? Yeah. Yes. I was right? going to say PEC. Yeah. And those were together this year, so hopefully they'll be together next year. And then she podcasts live, if that's able to happen again, and podcast movement. Mm. I mean, if all these things are able to happen again. Yeah, we don't know. <laughs> we're going to laugh at this episode. Like, ha, 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 look what they wanted to do in 2021. <laughs> <laughs> no, you're still shut down. <laughs> yeah, so Podcast Editors Conference, PodFest. Like, I'm, I've never been to Podcast Movement. So like I'm not like super stoked about going, but if it's Nashville, then you know I might make that. It makes it a lot easier to not have to worry about flights mm-hmm. and getting there. So Brian, you mentioned like going somewhere outside of like non podcast related conferences. Yeah. So like yeah. So if if Steve I wanted to Stewart, meet, sorry, okay. go ahead. <laughs> no, go ahead, Steve Stewart. I mean, he does what? FinCon. Well, Okay. Yeah, so he's in the financial advisor finance niche. Uh, so it would make, make sense for him to go to FinCon to right. meet people in his niche. Yeah, so I mean, there are some industry-related events that are related to my day job that I go to. Oh. But I don't know that me trying to get an inroad with the lo- the logistics mm-hmm. analyst for a multi-billion dollar company is really going to get me to my target client. Yeah, but if there is like a small business conference where you can go, I'm just thinking like, could is there anywhere like conference that we could go to and be like a presenter? Hmm. Like, how can you bring podcasting to your business? So like for you, Brian, like a small business, like if there's a local conference or anything, yeah, get your notepads out, people. <laughs> I am. So like for Steve Stewart being like, hey, guys at FinCon, let me present how you can build your been Connie business with podcasting. So like if there's like a small business expo near you, go there and talk about how podcasting can be used as a marketing tool for a small business. That's good. I never thought about being a speaker. Yeah. <laughs> dun, dun, dun. I was a virtual speaker at a dog trainer conference this year. <laughs> I love it. Nice. About was- podcasting. I was a speaker at a virtual summit. I can't remember, like, it was like a for business, like online businesses and such. I was cool. Kind of podcasting there. All right. So, what low value task can we pass on? Uh, and this is actually one of, if you go a couple pages in, mm-hmm. this comes up. You know, what can you outsource to for focus your low on value? higher value tasks? Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, in 2019, when things were different. I outsourced bookkeeping because last year in 2019 is also when I bought the studio and had a lot of different expenses coming in and out and all about, and it was hard to keep track of. So I actually outsourced that, which was handy because I don't think I would have been able to figure that out on myself, which, you know, it's a high value task, but it's something that I'm not capable of really doing well. (laughs) <laughs> I, I would agree with the idea of doing bookkeeping i don't know that you don't do it well but so i can't agree with that part but like for me i'm currently three weeks behind on bookkeeping so i need to close mm. the books on last month and i've still got a week and a half of transactions to reconcile that i haven't gotten to so that's that's certainly one one that we did outsource this year was getting the the yard done since yeah. I haven't been driving to work, we save like $100 a month in tr- transportation. So that has gone to paying somebody to take care of our yard. It looks so much better than if we did it. We don't argue about whose turn it is. It saves <laughs> it saves us frustration because both of us don't really like it. And yeah, it's just, it's been a huge load off. And I've got some other things that are similar, but bookkeeping, that's uh, one that I didn't have written down that I should have. Yeah. What you, Daniel? I didn't make it this far, but I think bookkeeping is probably... Oh, no, I did. So essentially for me, it's outsourcing some of my day-to-day work. So I, I like to get to the point where I'm working more like on the business and not in it. So outsourcing, just reducing like my editing load and like show notes and just kind of like the, and the wheeze type work on the business. Mm-hmm. Bookkeeping, I think, 
got to be up there. And then honestly, it'd be like housekeeping. Cause it's just kind of oh, like, that's a blessing to have outsourced. Yeah. yeah. So it's just something that. that neither Michelle or I want to do. It's not fun. We get no joy out of it. But it's also a mental drain to like go get some water and like you need to clean up in the kitchen or like do different yeah. things. It's just like knowing there's clutter out there. It makes it difficult to kind of do other things. Yeah. So if you're watching this or listening to this and you know of a good bookkeeper who would be good for podcast editors, you just heard I three do. people. You do? Yeah. Julie Chopa. She's mine. Well, send us she, her information. Uh, okay. Julie Pri- privately. Chopa. <laughs> Okay. She she goes to PodFest so that she can talk to podcasters. She's so not she's, a podcaster herself, but she tries wait, to be a part of the so community. So she goes and shows up at an industry that she serves. Yes. Oh, my. Why didn't we think of that? Yeah. Maybe, maybe I'll have to ask her about that as well. Okay. Okay. I uh, put yeah. her name in the... Off air, we'll have some questions about about. I don't know. Maybe Julie, she could be a guest. I, talk yeah. about bookkeeping and attending conferences. Yeah. Okay. So do we want to go ahead and go to the last question? The the million dollar question? Yeah, the million dollar question. Yeah. So <laughs> this question is brought to you by Poddex, the unofficial non-sponsor of Podcast Editors Mastermind. No relationship there whatsoever, but they have great questions that draw stuff out. So what do you value most in your friends? So who wants to, who wants to be on the spot first? What friends? <laughs> <laughs> so, okay, I'll go first. Uh, okay, when I, good. <laughs> when I read this, I immediately, in guessing context, jumped to you guys, the mm-hmm. mastermind. And so what I value is the perception of like seeing things that I don't, because like I don't see like my skills of like when I do things when I'm good at something. Mm-hmm. So being able to have somebody to be like, hey, no, that's really good helps. And like challenging so like we're setting all these goals now like there's going to be an expectation not not like guilt ridden oh. or anything like i'm not going to be my feet aren't going to be held to the fire but just like oh, no that was like, 2020 hey. 21 is going to be totally different <laughs> yeah but it's like meeting every week and being like okay well i need to like show progress with this otherwise mm-hmm. i'm going to be you know, the kid flunking in class. How's that reaper course, Daniel? How's that reaper course, <laughs> yeah. Daniel? How's that reaper course, Daniel? How's that course going, Daniel? Are you, are you making fun of me again? <laughs> <laughs> but because of that, like, I'm closer to having that completed than I ever have before. Yeah. Yeah. And then also being able to give honest, valuable feedback. So, like, if I'm creating something new, so, like, I made that video, so I sent it to you guys mm-hmm. to get your feedback on it. And I would hope that it's honest feedback and you're not just trying to make me feel better. I mean, I can't say. <laughs> no, it was, it was a good video. They hate it. it. Oh. Yeah. So I'll go next and then Jennifer, you can wrap this up if that's okay. Okay. Yeah. So I, I actually, I thought about the three of you as well. Believe it or not, I do have other friends, but you guys are great examples of what I really value in a friend. And... <laughs> I know it's hard to believe, but I, I do have a friend. <laughs> I don't. You guys are it. No. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> and, and this is a, a hard question if you don't have friends. <laughs> it, it is. And it's a little bit hard to put in words. But I, I think one of the things that I really value is getting that additional perspective, which I think is something you kind of touched mm-hmm. on. Mm-hmm. Having somebody that I can go to and vent and have them go, wow, that really yeah. stinks. I'm really sorry about that or wh- whatever. Also, you're being a poopy head, so you need to suck it up, buttercup, and get moving. <laughs> and all of us, I think, have probably played that role at one time or another to me. So I appreciate that. And then also just the, but also we still love you, so you can keep coming back. That's been a big <laughs> deal. <laughs> How about you, Jennifer? Yeah. Uh, I don't know if it's what I value most in my friends, but one thing I value in friends is the networking. Mm. That if I need something, I can go to them and they might not be able to help me, but they might know someone who can. And tapping into the hive mind, if you will, it's like, okay. And and with you guys too, it's like, well, I, you know, a hive mind, there's four of us, maybe we can figure out something. Or one of you 
like the bookkeeper thing just now. <laughs> You're yeah. like, hey, you know, oh, well, I, I do know someone. It's the one who did my books. <laughs> and just being able to tap into to other people's resources and not be on your own, if that makes sense. Mm-hmm. Like I said, maybe not the most valuable part about having friends because it sounds like I'm using them, but it's definitely <laughs> good to have resources. Yeah, yeah, because you can't go it alone. There's like value in like who you like. It's not about like what you know; it's about who you know and what they know and like that kind of thing. Mm-hmm. So I don't know if I'm making a clip. I understand what you're saying, and I appreciate. Okay. It. <laughs> All right. Well, we're about out of time, Daniel. Yep. So. The next thing in the master plan is actually creating goals. So I don't know. I think we'll need to talk about this to see how we want to approach it. And if we want to do this, what do you guys think? Should we do it online? I I think two weeks on goals are enough. I think everybody else can do theirs. Because what we were really, I think, trying to do is share a little bit about ours so that we can Mm -hmm. spur other people to think about theirs as well and hopefully do them. I think that... You know, the next session we have on the 19th is the one with Steve Stewart and Mark Deal, where we're talking about rates and things like that. I think that'll be a great follow-up for this. Yeah. And then, I don't know, maybe next year we do a check-in or something. I like that. Yeah. And in the meantime, people can go to podcasteditorsmastermind.com and join our newsletter and get their very own copy of the, what's it called? The Podcast the- Editor's Master Plan. Yeah. Podcast editor's master plan. And let us know what you come up with. Like, what were your accomplishments? What did you struggle with? Let us know in the group and let's kind yeah. of talk it out. I think I think it'd be a lot of fun to see, like, what other people come up with. All right. So if you want to be a guest on this program after a while, because it's, it's a holiday slump and we're going to be winging it for a little bit but mm-hmm. if you want to be a guest go to podcast editor mastermind.com and click be a guest and if you would like to add to your editing portfolio we would gladly allow you to edit one of our episodes and then give you credit on that episode in the following episode or whatever i guess when you're on with us we say hey great job on editing the episode or if you want feedback or yeah Whatever. Mm-hmm. And then if you have, you know, an area of expertise that applies to podcast editors, awesome. If you want to brainstorm and mastermind something with us live, that's cool too. So podcast editor mastermind.com be a guest. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for joining us. Like we've mentioned next week, we are sitting down with Mark Deal and Steve Stewart of the Podcast Editors Club and going over rates and what 2020 looked like for podcast editors. Thank you so much for listening. I am Daniel Abendroth, and you can find me at (laughs) rothmedia.audio. I'm Jennifer Longworth, and you can find me at bourbonbarrelpodcasting.com or across the social media at kypodcasting. And I'm Brian Ensminger. You can find me at toptieraudio.com. And not with us today was Carrie Caulfield Eric. You can find her at yayapodcasting.com. Thanks so much. Thank you. Uh, um, so, how much is that? Um, 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 um